Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another fundamental analysis video for a company that, uh, well, you're looking at it on screen right now, for a company that has had quite a day, quite, quite a day. So we're going to cover, guys, Target, especially after their earnings, because, wow, catastrophic, completely catastrophic. So I want to take a look at this company because last time we were here, it was about last year, roughly around this time last year, believe it or not. So Let's actually take a look at this company, see if it's a buy right now, because I'm very curious in this. But before we get started, make sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really does help over the algorithm on YouTube, as well as from, make sure to follow us and XFL Investment League address on the Discord, which is the best place to catch the videos, the live streams, as well as the shorts. The link to that is in the description below. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. So let's jump right into the juicy stuff when it comes to Target. From QE Infinity, Target with a huge earnings miss stock is now down a whopping 17 percent in pre-market trading guys and um this tweet was put out on uh 7 38 a.m in the morning so yeah kind of redundant there a.m in the morning but still you guys get the point the consumer is tapped out target plunges 50 percent in pre-market and well <laughs> intraday it fell down to 21.41 percent i mean you guys just guys up it's just a line right this is just a line going down right there from a price of around 156 dollars and 56 cents down to now 121 dollars and 72 cents this is officially guys 52 week low when it comes to target 52 week low at 120 dollars and 21 cents now last time we were here we could see that we were roughly Actually, we're sub $110. At around this time last year, October 30th, October, you know, into November, maybe into December. Yeah, and then out of nowhere, it just spiked. November 9th, 2023, spiked up to 130 and then it just continued to gain upwards. But now it is back down to where it was. And the, on the one year, let's take a look at this, it is down 5.51%. On the year today, it's down 14.09%. That really is it, right? That really is it. So... Now, the question is, is, well, what in the world do we do with this information? Because that is a pretty big drop. But before we do that, let's take a look at the Seeking Alpha versus Wall Street kind of comparisons here. Because Seeking Alpha has no sells or even strong sells when it comes to Target. In fact, we have one strong buy, six buys, four holds, and no sells or no strong sells. However, Wall Street has 15 strong buys and four buys, 17 holds, and one sell. So it's still a category for buy when it comes to target among this disastrous earnings. And in fact, taking a look at the actual earnings, we can see the target non-gap EPS of $1.85 misses by 45 cents and revenue of 25.67 billion misses by $230 million. This revenue is up 1.1% year over year. Third quarter comparable sales increased 0.3% driven by strong traffic and digital performance. Guest traffic grew 2.4% over the prior year. Digital comparable sales grew 10.8% reflecting a nearly 20% growth on the same day delivered by powered, uh, sorry, same day delivery powered by Target Circle 360 and double digit growth in drive up. So you guys could see that the digital comparable sales is definitely what's mainly driving this up however it is not necessarily taking up the mantle entirely to what the comparable sales would have been normally beauty comparable sales grew more than six percent food and beverages and essentials categories grew low single digits compared to the prior year for the fourth quarter the company expects approximately flat comparable sales and gap and adjusted eps of dollar 85 to two dollars and 45 cents versus the consensus of two dollars and 64 so that right then and there shows that they're expecting way lower than the consensus. Translating to a full year expected gap and non-gap uh, EPS range of $8.30 to $8.90. They were expecting $9.52. That is complete catastrophe. That is a complete catastrophe in comparison to the consensus. So the consensus may actually be driven down now. However, if the consensus remains the same, this may be an issue when it comes to target in the very near future so let's actually take a look at my kind of analysis when it comes to this we got the ticket for tgt market cap of 56.1 billion dollars 
a small PE of 12.57. This is looking really good. With the current share price of $121.72, we already saw this. We don't need to look at this anymore. Annual dividends per share of $4.48, which it is a yield of almost 3% for a company like this. That is absolutely insane, and I love it. It's really, really nice. And not to mention that it's not something that doesn't seem that they can't afford to actually pay it. In fact, the payout ratio is about 45.45%. The five-year CAGR of 11.3%, 56 consecutive years of dividend payment. Ex-dividend date was as of, I'm recording this video, November 20th. So if you do decide to buy in this company, you will not be paid out on the payout date of December 10th. Instead, it will probably be, what is that? March, right? March 10th, basically. But at the end of the day, you're still, if you do decide, you're still sniping that awesome, awesome, you know, dividend yield. And they do pay their dividends quarterly. Now, I do want to show something else. So, dividend safety, in accordance to Seeking Alpha, it's actually an A minus. The company ability to continue paying uh, current dividends amount. Dividend growth is a B plus. Okay, really nice. Dividend yields a C, but if the stock price falls, obviously that's a, that's a good thing. You know, that will increase this up. And dividend consistency, them being a dividend king with 56 consecutive years, this is an easy A plus. So coming back over here, we can see that this dividend ends up being around $2.1 billion being paid out every single year. And take their 10-year average free cash flow as you subtract this, and they have left $1.66 billion. And the last year's free cash flow ends up being around $1.75 billion. These payout ratios in regards to the free cash flow, it is 54.21% and 55.43% for the last year's free cash flow and the 10-year average, respectively. Yeah, they can still afford to pay this dividend. It's getting a little bit close to that 60% mark for me, but it's still within that, you know, 5% margin of safety overall. Taking a look at this very quickly, we got the fundamentals. Starting with the net income, we got 10 years ago of VA. Uh, Ooh, way, way down. Negative $1.64 billion to one year ago of $4.14 billion. That is an increase of 353%. Guys, four years ago, oh, sorry, 10 years ago, it was 2014. That's kind of nuts to think that four, 10 years ago, actually 2013 technically, because this is taken from 2023, so... Yeah, this is uh 2020 this is 2013. That's kind of nuts. I was still in high school. Wow. I look at this and I'm like, okay, kind of flat. I okay, fine, a negative whatever, but kind of flat overall from nine to four years ago, basically, or nine to or nine to five years ago. Then spikes up as of three years ago, probably because of COVID, you know, a target being one of the few ones that stayed open, right? Falling back down as of two years ago. And then um, now it's climbing back up. Overall, though, I'm going to have to give this a 60%. It's kind of meh, not really doing much of anything here. Looking now into the free cash flow, we got 10 years ago of $2.7 billion. Two one year ago of $3.82 billion. Increase of 42% with an average of $3.73 billion. Now, we do see a massive negative here as of two years ago. And the reason for this is because of the cash flow operations actually falling. In fact, here we can see it. Their free cash flow, or sorry, their cash from operations that year, and by the way, my bad, we're technically in their fiscal 2025, was $4.02 billion in January or for the for the year of 2022, technically. Yeah, because this, this is as of January 2023, so uh, this is technically 2022. Um, and their CapEx rose up to a lot. I mean, it's been constantly at around like 3.5, 2.6, 3.5, and now nowhere 5.5. So that's the reason why I went negative as of uh, two years ago. So that's why I'm going to give this guy a 50%. It really has just gone nowhere in the past 10 years. Now, the revenue, on the other hand, looks a little bit different. 10 years ago of $72.62 billion to one year ago of $107.4 billion, increase of 47.91%. Nice consistently increasing. I mean, from eight years ago, yeah, you did have a dip from nine to eight, but all in all, it is nicely increasing. As of one year ago, they did go down a little bit, but it doesn't look too bad. I'm going to give this a 95%. Well, the assets of, as a reference, you guys can see it right here, and the liabilities as well. Now, doing the assets minus the liabilities, we could see that this is just all, it's just not going anywhere either. It's been just up and down. Average total assets of 46.6 billion, liabilities of nearly 34 billion, and this is a difference of $12.64 billion. I'm gonna give this a 70%, stagnant, not really going anywhere. Still look fine, I guess you could say. Now, the cash flow minus the liabilities. 
uh, it's been going down ever since, what, eight years ago to basically two years ago. Two years ago, yes, it did go up. And there are instances of this increasing, going back to zero a little bit here and there. I, you know, I originally gave this a 40%. I'm going to change this, but we can see that the one year goal value is negative $38.11 billion and the average being negative $29.51 billion. I'm going to lower this down, guys. I have to lower this down to like around like a 20% because I'm looking at it again. I'm just not liking it. And shares of standing actually looks beautiful, consistently decreasing very, very nicely. We got 10 years ago of 640.2 million shares, not billion with a B, but million with an M to today of 461.6 million shares as a buyback on the 10 year of almost 28% and previous year to the current year, a buyback of 0.02%. This will probably slow down to about near zero, if I'm not mistaken, uh, as of like these kinds of times, because they clearly are having a, a hard time now, but it should stay roughly the same uh, around like 461.6, 461. Maybe they'll increase a little bit, but it won't be anything too major. Overall, I'm going to give this 100%. Really, really good graph. And lastly, cash and codes that currently hold $3.5 billion with an average of $3.59 billion. Overall grade, 68%. Barely makes it. If I put that cash flow minus liabilities at 40, it would actually be 70%. It's a proceed with caution kind of company. It's the fun. I mean, it's a retail. I'm half tempted to cover Walmart in the future, in the very near future, just so that we, we can make the comparisons, right? Because I really, you know, you may, you may want to compare Target to Walmart. Even though Walmart, it's more less, uh, it's more geared towards, I don't want to say the poor, but it's not the poor. It's mainly geared to like the lower middle class, while Target's like the high end middle, not really high end, but like middle, middle class to high end middle class, basically. Um, so that's why I'm going to give a 68%. Yeah, proceed with caution, right? Proceed with caution kind of company. But the main thing is, what about these uh, these valuations? Because it's looking interesting with that massive 20% drop. So let's jump now into the discounted free cash flow and let's input some of these numbers because uh, right off the bat, no numbers inputted. We got $190 and a penny and then adjusting for debt, 163.65. So let's input the 10 year value. We get the guy here 5%. Honestly, this is very easy as three, five, and seven percent, right? Three, five, seven increments to two. I think that's very, very fair. Now, we want to aim for that middle spot for that medium price, uh, as what we have in the past, right? That's essentially what we want to be at because that will essentially give us the prospects of like, okay, where are we now in correlation to what is most likely going to happen, right? The lowest and the high assumptions are just there to just like, okay, if this happens, if that happens, ideally though, you want that middle price. Okay. Now when it comes to the uh, share buyback, they have been buying back at around three and a half percent. Once again, very, very easy. Let's do two. Then let's do three. And then let's do four. I'm a little bit afraid to put positives because they may actually issue, but I think overall in the next 10 years, they may actually continue to buy back. At least I believe so. Now, when it comes to the required rate of return, very easy. I want to at least beat the market. Um, actually, we yeah, have more than beat the market at like around 12% for the next 10 years. So let's put 12%. And uh, these are really interesting numbers. These are really, really interesting numbers. $83.13 to $136.04. And then adjusting for debt, $50.87 to $96.39. If you guys remember, um, we were there uh, almost sub 100 bucks not too long ago. Now, where we're currently at is we are right here in between adjusting for debt and not adjusting for debt. The thing is with when it comes to retails is that inventory and they have a problem with inventory inventory is considered debt as well so not debt but like it's considered like a liability so i would actually argue that looking at the not adjusting for debt is actually a better prospects when it comes to this 106 17 to 136 04 guys we're at 121 it looks like a great buying price right now the issue is the cautionary thing with the fundamentals it really really is but there's a lot of prospects to come in the future, especially now with Trump in office or soon to be in office with hopefully the elimination of a bunch of taxes. That's going to give especially uh, consumer discretionary companies a lot of money to play with. And a lot of people, if they start getting more money in their paycheck, they actually may go out and buy stuff at retail stores, right? Like Target. So 
a lot of prospects, but it's a little bit of a risk. Not a gamble. It's a risk when it comes to this company. But again, not financial advice. Every investment is the present value of your cash flow. So make your own financial decisions. I have these calculators available for free. I have the five-year average one for you guys uh, to have for free. Just input all the numbers there. The link to that is in the description below. It's you know, I show how to do it. So if you guys would like to have it for free, by all means, go ahead. But this is my personal opinion on this. Again, not financial advice. Now, very, very quickly, if we take a look at this dividend, it has a pretty big drop. Uh, the dividend yield is going to go up $4.48, putting in $6,215. This says you 51.06 shares. Annual dividends increase by a whopping $228.75. This is quarterly $57.19 and monthly basically a around 20 bucks, right? $19.06. So that pretty much does it, guys, for my two cents on this company. Let me know what you guys think. Have you owned this company? Did you buy it when it was like at 106 and now you wrote it up and now you're voting it back down? Um, you know, I I was tempted to buy it after that massive drop, but after those fundamentals, I'm like, oh. Again, the prospects of the economy actually getting a whole lot better with, with tax incentives and tax right, you know, tax, tax cuts, all that stuff in the future, very near future, is really, really good. But it is a slight risk when it comes to Target. So tell me what you guys think. Tell me what you guys plan to do, what if what you plan to do, what you don't plan to do. If you guys are willing to share all of that, really is greatly appreciated. But with that said, guys, make sure to like, subscribe, comment. really does help with the algorithm on YouTube as well. So make sure to follow us on XFL Investing with Jones on Discord, which is the best place to catch the videos that which is the best place to catch the videos, the live streams, and the shorts. The link is in the description below for that one. With that said, have a blessed day. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and peace out.